Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The theme that's carried out, that's carried through the, the prayers of this evening service and tomorrow morning is the theme of, of being watchful, being prepared. So when we read the commemoration for the day, it mentioned the parable of the virgins that had enough oil for their lamp, and likewise the virgins who didn't have enough oil. And they were just ready. They were prepared for the coming kingdom. It's probably harder today than at any other time in history to maintain that state of awareness and alertness and watchfulness. Most of the time, it's almost as if our thoughts are hijacked by the things that we experience around us constantly, the things that we hear, the things that we see. You can imagine a time, even for many of you when you were children, and certainly even when I was a child, that there were far fewer distractions, and there were far fewer things grabbing for your attention and trying to get a hold of your mind. And so now we have not only the struggle with our own sinful passions and thoughts that are innate, that are just part of the reality of us being fallen creatures. We have not only that, along with the temptations that are thrown at us from demonic realms, but then we have the temptations that are thrown at us from other people, from people that, for, for whatever reason, whether it's to, to make money or to win an election, or to try and keep us worried about things that we don't really need to be worried about, whatever. So there's always people clamoring for our attention and for our mind. And so now more than ever, we have to be watchful. And I want to read to you something. This is from, this is a wonderful book, by the way, by Father Alkibiades. Kalivas, he was a professor of liturgical theology at, at Holy Cross for many years, but it's about Holy Week and Pascha in the, the Greek Orthodox tradition. So there's a, there's a few varieties of the things that we do during Holy Week um, in Greek practice or in Arabic practice that they don't necessarily do in Slavic practice, and so there's, there's differences. But he quotes in here, on this theme of watchfulness, St. Hesychios the priest. St. Hesychios says, Through his incarnation, so through taking on flesh, God gave us the model for a holy life and recalled us from our ancient fall. In addition to many other things, he taught us feeble as we are, that we should fight against the demons with humility, fasting, prayer, and watchfulness. For when, after his baptism, Jesus went into the desert, and the devil came up to him as though he were merely a man, Jesus began his spiritual warfare by fasting and won the battle by this means. Though being God and God of gods, he had no need of any such means at all. So he did this for our benefit, to teach us. I shall now tell you in plain, straightforward language. We'll see how straightforward it is when I read it. You can tell me. Do you think it's straightforward? <laughs> I shall now tell you in plain, what's straightforward to some may not be straightforward to others. I shall tell you in plain, straightforward language what I consider to be the types of watchfulness which gradually cleanse the intellect from impassioned thoughts. So which gradually cleanse the mind from being captive. 
from being enslaved. One type of watchfulness consists in closely scrutinizing every mental image or provocation. For only by means of a mental image can Satan fabricate an evil thought and insinuate this into the intellect in order to lead it astray. So these are the type of things where when spouses begin to think, have the thought or the mental image of their spouse suddenly dying, and they start to revel in that nostalgia, or that, that feeling. These are the type of thoughts that people have when they might be standing over the crib of a child and suddenly they want to hurt the child, they throw the child out the window. There's a mental image that comes. And if it's cut off by watchfulness right at the gate, nothing happens. There's no sin. But if you begin to entertain the thought and enter into dialogue with it, serious problems immediately start to develop. The second type of watchfulness consists in freeing the heart from all thoughts, keeping it profoundly silent and still, and in praying. And so this is something where you're actually making effort to expel every thought about anything and be still and silent before God. The third type consists in continually and humbly calling upon the Lord Jesus Christ for help. So this is like the Jesus prayer, constantly calling out to God, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, help me. A fourth type is always to have the thought of death in one's mind. These types of watchfulness, my child, act like doorkeepers and bar entry to evil thoughts. A further type, which along with the others is also effective, is to fix one's gaze on heaven and to pay no attention to anything material. If we could only do that. Every year we come to Great and Holy Pascha after journeying through Holy Week. And when you're at Pascha and we've read the homily of St. Chrysostom, inviting all to come to the feast and everyone to come to the banquet, and it feels impossible to even imagine or conceive of anyone that would be in hell, or that would be deprived of joy or life. And we find it, maybe for a few hours, that we feel this sense of, of, of like it's impossible not to be happy. But then very quickly that recedes. And we go back to being captive again. And this is part of our life. This is part of our struggle. Until we attain to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ and are genuinely confirmed in Him with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, loving the Lord our God with everything that we are and loving our neighbor as ourselves. So we move, instead of being firm and stable within, we move in this kind of spiral motion. It's going to the center and coming here to God and then going away, and then coming back again, and then going away, and then coming back again, and then going away. By God's grace, provided that we continue to make this movement of coming back, he draws us closer and closer to himself until one day we are fixed and brought into this, um, what St. Maximus calls an ever-moving stability of participation in the grace and life of God. But we begin that now by this constant returning. And then we have this constant returning of Great and Holy Week we have the constant turning of the entire year. We have weeks and months and the year that constantly call us back 
to return, to return, to return, again and again and again. And so the heart of our life is this great return and inclination to the dawn of the Kingdom of God. And so may we learn to be watchful, to be attentive, to struggle, to cast down every thought and everything within our life that exalts itself against the Lord our God and to dash all of those things against the rock which is Christ himself so that they are broken and no longer have any authority in our life so that the only authority in our life is the Lord God himself and his holy word and his commandments which teach us to love him and to love one another.